This final four preview edition of Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details over at WYNNBet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by BetQL. Your bracket may buzz, but your bankroll never has to with BetQL. Use promo code March30 for 30% off the entire year of BetQL. That's BetQL.com, promo code March30. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is your home for free daily video picks from SGPN. It's like YouTube for sports gambling. Make sure to Subscribe to our profile over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Odds Crowd has a ton of free fantasy betting contests, including a $2,000 season long MLB contest and a $500 weekly contest. Download their app today over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. We're also brought to you by Pixwise. Follow the Pixwise Capper Contest at Pixwise.com for free picks and analysis throughout the tournament from the likes of John Rostein, Rashad Phillips, Jeff Nadu, and more. See which expert is trending hot as they battle it out for a winner takes all ten thousand dollar prize over at Pixwise.com. We're also brought to you by Better Edge. Better Edge operates like a stock exchange for the sports world. Pick the teams you like and have someone else by the other side. Sign up at betteredge.com, promo code SGP. For a free ten dollar play, that's b e t t o r edge dot com promo code s g p. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner picks Ryan Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? We are here for the final four, Sean. The final four. While the heater is cooling off. Yes, I've noticed. Uh, the cooler. Is about to go on the heater, so let's bring on our guest, Sean. Bringing a, a in studio, talking college basketball. Colby Dan, aka the Dan to base. What's happening, Colby? I mean, I I just enjoyed that game so much last night. I start I actually started to have a little bit of a breakdown, realizing there's only a couple games left, guys. Yeah, it, uh, it's know? like the end of the NFL season. It gets scary. You're looking for meaning. What it, am I going to do? It's yeah. very scary. It luckily, is that. luckily, Colby, you do have FCS football to fall back on. We're going to be going even harder in FCS football. Took a little sidestep here uh, to cover March Madness, college Side basketball. <laughs> Man, Kramer, the the I'm looking at the records here for in our spreadsheet. They're not updated. Don't worry. I've manually updated <laughs> my locks 13 and five. Let's fucking go. Not only did I hit the lock and the bonus lock in the elite eight, I also hit my dog a plus 260 dog. Ooh, I know ooh. what you're thinking. Oh, that must have been UCLA money line. No, I was on UCLA plus seven and a half. However, I went off the board and for my dog, I did a Baylor minus seven and a half, Gonzaga minus nine parlay to get you at plus two. 60 LFG. Uh and Oregon State baby coming through Pac 12. Wow. Oregon State plus 8 UCLA is my bonus lock. And and again, I was so close to going 4 and 0 oh, if it wasn't for those pesky little beavers. Oregon State getting that backdoor 3. Here's the thing, a lot a of sweat. The, a lot of these games really with the exception of the UCLA one, not amazing games, w- but the exception of Gonzaga, they were all really close to the spread. So they were as gamblers, they, there was a lot of sweating going on and uh, well, that's fun why, watches. That's why you do gamble, right? Yes. I mean, the, the, some of those games would have been snoozers. If yeah, not, I mean, that, then Houston, <laughs> Oregon State, maybe there was a chance they were kind of in it. Baylor, Arkansas, same thing. It, it, Baylor was just dominating. Well, we'll get into that. We're going to do a full recap of the Elite Eight. Then we're going to be joined by Dan Leach and Scott Bowser talking Final Four. Bowser, of course, huge. UCLA Bruins fan Bowser's out there in Las Vegas. You know what else is out there? The win. That's right. But you don't need to be out in Las Vegas to enjoy the win. All you got to do is go to I'll tell you. <laughs> wynnbet.com. That's right. winbet.com. Download the app today. If uh, if sports gambling legal in your state, good chance win bet is there ready to go. If not, they're adding new states every single day. All you got to do is go to winbet.com for up to a $500 risk free bet. Get in on all the madness while you can. Looks like uh, Kramer forgot to mute Bowser. He's already mm. bleeding in on the live read. Always love that. Uh, win bet. <laughs> they got you covered. MLB, MLB opening day. 
so much to bet on all over at winbet.com. And don't forget that $500 risk free bet. Terms and conditions apply. WYNNbet.com. Let's go, baby. All right. Let's go. Houston 67, Oregon State 61. Like I said, Colby at Oregon State. Kramer, you and I were on Houston. I, I don't know. Is this a bad beat? I mean, that kid yes. hitting that three there at no. the end. No, 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 no. We battled all the way back to tie it up. It was like NC Nick said. It's like, I can't believe they came all the way back and we oh we had to sweat that out. <laughs> I know. It was it it went from them battling back to almost winning the game <laughs> to then them not <laughs> covering, missed free throws at the end. It it kind of got it got crazy. It, it's all right, so two types of losses. Real, real quick, it's impressive that we have the new studio, Kramer. We have plenty, uh, a giant, nice table, so that we can fit Colby's company issued laptop on, and still <laughs> finds a way to be on his phone. <laughs> you well, know, what do you, what do you what do you have going on over there? Look, you gotta have a lot of different things going, buddy. Um, right? I, ha- I can get a fourth camera. Maybe I just need. <laughs> we're gonna set something. The Colby up. cam. The Colby cam. Uh, maybe just see one what's those, going on that screen t- the entire time. Down views. I uh, look. This was the this was the worst thing that could happen for me and Houston and my relationship with Houston. Mm. Uh, they did exactly what they shouldn't have done, which was they let this guy. They let the cover get away from. There was no version of this where they should have not won. They should have won this walking away, just like Gonzaga, as you like to Gonzaga. call him. Gonzaga. <laughs> uh, I like Gonzaga. Th- I like Gonzaga. <laughs> I I've I did a deep dive on the what? correct correct pronunciation. Gonzaga. Yeah, gun, not like Gonzaga. Gun. Hey, t- 2021. They have to say you, gun first. Hold on. I thought you were playing with the word, like the word play of going to the final four. Oh yes, I was when oh, I was okay. doing that. Yes. But, oh, okay, you weren't backing into that. No. Was this a? Are you justifying a mispronunciation? No. <laughs> okay. It's Gonzaga. I know. I heard you playing it on Google Speak or whatever earlier, and I was like, <laughs> what programming is, my brain? <laughs> what is going on over there? I just think that H- Houston losing the cover in this type of way is the exact reason why I should have never backed this goddamn atrocity of a. <laughs> they they tricked me into their top twenty in offense and defense. They're a balanced unit. They were dominating, Sean. Yeah. What the fuck? I was there and and they just kind of let the it slip free away. Throws. Oregon State getting back in there. I and want a full investigation though cuz that kid like why do you why do you shoot the 3 if you're not going to foul? It's a why, great point. Why do you shoot the 3 if you're not going to look if you're not looking to continue the game? You do what the Eagles do, and you bring in your third string quarterback. Mm. That's the way <laughs> it works. Sudfeld. That's the way because you want to get a look at those guys before the season ends. Oh, yeah, man. great strategy. But you, you don't shoot the three, and then they were coached to not foul. Almost I know, like, dude. It's almost me. like the booster rang up, called up the coach, and was like, "Look, buddy, I didn't think we were gonna be here. I, Oregon State probably doesn't have this accent, but I'm keeping going with it. Hey, buddy, didn't think we were gonna be here, but would be." Re- Really great, really great. Cover that spread. Yeah, Can I get that covered. Get that spread covered. I don't care about winning the game. Uh, uh, so definitely not down. in Oregon to be like, here I'm lighting some incense. If you could cover this game, I'd certainly appreciate. My it. crystals would yeah. really appreciate. <laughs> That's a classic LA thing. I'm pretty sure the crystal stores in Los Angeles never close. Every other business yeah, yeah, closed. Yeah. Weed stores <laughs> stayed open because they're essential health service. And again, I like weed, but come on. Weed services never close. And crystal stores, they they must have stayed open. What kind, the crystal bull, business. what kind of bullshit hot take are you trying to have? Weed isn't essential? Well, I, I know, oh, I know, I thought, Ryan's, yeah, Ryan's I'm physically my, and I'm mentally I'm serving my divorce I, I thought papers. you were going to get mad at the crystals, right? <laughs> uh, Kramer's also. A, I know we're not here to talk <laughs> about crystals, but I do have a funny crystal story. <laughs> sure. Uh, going a, a girl, uh, hopefully. Go, go yes, of course. Uh, going <laughs> to a lunch with a uh, a colleague, uh, a female colleague, to have a completely professional. Uh, lunch, mm. completely professional lunch, and you son of a bitch. This this is a, a professional conversation, <laughs> professional conversation, synergies, opportunities, value, and then all of a sudden, have you ever thought about trying crystals? <laughs> uh, like what? What do you mean here? <laughs> Are you talking crystal meth? Is, Are it, you talk- is this like a Cutco thing where it, where <laughs> she's trying to? Well, it gets better. Multi-level story, marketing crystals here. Long story short, short she had been traveling the world, hmm. collecting crystals from all these different places. 
And what she did, according to her, she would sleep with these crystals. <laughs> and the key she spilled the, the beer on well, the laptop. Chris. The key was to find the crystals that were left <laughs> by like the so one of the alien species that visited this planet long ago. They were very big on the same exact principles of chi as the Buddhist oh, monks. Which yeah. coincidence? I don't know. Maybe they're both. Maybe they're aliens. Who knows? But anyway, so she would sl- if sh- she would travel to like Africa and Europe to collect these crystals, all to Sean. You wouldn't believe it. Sleep on them. <laughs> wow. Right, no, now I, I'm not a uh, what, what is it sarc sar- sar- sarcasmic rhythm expert or whatever the, the circadian sleep- rhythm. There you go, circadian rhythm. <laughs> but. But I'm gonna guess that sleeping on <laughs> fucking rocks yeah. isn't gonna help you center. Well, anything. maybe when you met her, that's how this first half under thing anyway, kind of just long really story took short, off. Chicks who dig crystals and Houston are teams I'm running. <laughs> I'm not backing anymore. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. That was a tough one. That felt like the bad beat of the tournament for me. Baylor laying <laughs> seven and a half. They won. They covered eighty-one seventy-two. My angle in that game, of course, was. Baylor, they shot horrible against Villanova. Still got the win and the cover. They're gonna figure that out, and they did big time. Still had to sweat that one. No, shot yeah. a, shot a really good game. Yeah. But they didn't play amazing defense, and Arkansas almost almost backdoored that thing. And I was I was traumatized because I had Houston minus eight the first game, and I I kept feeling like another backdoor was coming. Luckily, they got the cover. They got the the win. <laughs> you there. got Doris on the board over there. Um. <laughs> yes. You have to know when to call. Let's check him. <laughs> Colby, I know you were you were very against the Arkansas head coach. You sh- you threw out some co- uh, some hot takes early preseason. H- have they come <laughs> for you? I mean, they got to the Elite Eight. Ooh, uh, where are you at with them? No, I like their program, man. I think Musselman. Uh-huh. Musselman. I mean, look, this. What I said, by the way, two years ago, they hired him, and I said he would never get past this. Well, I, they said it was the best hire of the whole off season. Yeah. I was, I was a fan of Muslim at Nevada, but I argued that I thought there was better hires. Um, and then as I was in an argument, I said, I, I'd be surprised if he got past the sweet 16, right? Well, he made me eat my words in two years, but uh, <laughs> I still say they got a very fortunate, uh, what was it? Uh, three mid majors essentially to get there. Um, so uh, but I think he did a good job, man. I, I, I think this program is really young and I think he's going to get back there, but I will say X's and O's wise, man, I, it would have been uh, uh, this p- particular game. I, I did have some problems down the stretch. I mean, they went through like an eight minute drought down the end, you know, th- the, the final stretch of the game Yeah. where I thought, you know, definitely should have per- perhaps tried to call timeout and make, make a few adjustments. Man, because man, it wasn't some working. Offense yeah. There. Yeah. UCLA. This game was a amazing. UCLA fifty one, Michigan forty nine. Best game, dude. One UCLA of the best getting seven and a half points. That was that felt like that was never in doubt. T- t- tell me that this UCLA team's the funnest team to watch in the tournament. I, I I've loved rooting for them. I, I was kind of in a weird predicament, kind of basically rooting for Michigan to to win. So Col- uh, Kramer and I have. Michigan uh, to get to the final four in this uh, fantasy draft that we did. Unfortunately, that didn't hit. Uh, they had some good <laughs> looks at the end of the game there, but I, I mean, UCLA did a really good job with the two big men. I, I thought Michigan would win, but not cover. But um, they did a really good job defensively. Uh, two things really stood out there: the way UCLA defended the three. I know Michigan even got some good looks late in that game. Yeah, uh, but <coughs> traditionally, yeah. Tra- tra- I, I, say say his name, Wagner. Yeah. Wagner. Yeah. If, yeah. if I've ever seen a choke job, that <laughs> air ball. Oh, oh, that I, was, he, I thought it got blocked in real time, and when I saw the replay, oh, I'm like, wait, he just airballed it. You know what that yeah. is? That's the I'm I'm way too nervous. I don't want to take this shot. Air ball. <laughs> That's what that is, dude. You, but they, they shot. Twenty seven percent from three. You don't uh, listen when you're juiced up and you're too ready for the game. You throw it off the backboard. When you're scared shitless, you leave it short. He left it short. This Michigan is, lost this game. Yeah, this uh, is an interesting set. UCLA obviously beating Alabama and Michigan to get to the final four. Alabama and Michigan combined to go seventeen from thirty six at the free throw line and uh, ten I from thirty nine to hit on the free throw line from man. from the three point in the Sweet Sixteen in Elite Eight. I think uh, that uh, that bear dude uh, from from the uh, ESPN podcast he tweeted that out. Someone had a great response saying that uh, UCLA's free throw defense is incredible. <laughs> well, no, you got to credit the fact that UCLA then shot eighty six percent from the free throw line. 
So you had yeah, they made up for it. Yeah, but I mean, maybe they were getting lucky bounces in in these missed threes and the free throw. I, I don't know. We can we can we can get to that when we uh, when we start previewing how, that. But game. how about the Bruins? And I, I I highlighted this in the Alabama game. The they barely turned the ball over, and the same situation happened against Michigan. Everyone's talking about how great Michigan's defense was. Well, uh, UCLA only had eight turnovers the whole game. Michigan had fourteen, and I feel like a lot of those turnovers for UCLA were in the first three minutes of the game. Yeah. Yeah. UCLA, man, this is going to be an interesting game. Last game of the elite eight, 66 to 85 USC got put in a body bag by Gonzaga. I mean, Gonzaga was laying nine <sighs> again. Never really felt like it was in doubt. They, it they just fucking, so this grew. was a brutal game. Timmy man. was, when are we going to, when are we going to see Gonzaga Gonzaga tested? USC was the one team I didn't trust in this elite eight. They're the one team, Colorado. I watched them beat them three times, went three and zero against them, and I still took them because I was like, they're going to slow down the game. Well, and you they're know, Kobe, Kobe took every dog. And yeah. I'll, and I'll say the this: the, the coat, like I think, to to one to your point, you know, in a way, I think two two coaches kind of showed their their colors a little bit. I think USC they weren't prepared. Yeah, they weren't prepared, yeah. I mean, and Gonzaga just destroyed them. They didn't even try. Like they didn't put out even an effort. And the other one is, uh, I think Michigan. I think you know we Little saw joke we, job. I mean, uh, up until this uh, game, I liked the coaching that Juwan Howard was doing. He still put his team in a good position to win. They just missed some open shots, man. Yeah, they just uh, yeah. Man. I mean, yeah, and and overall, yeah, I don't know, solid season for Michigan. But they really they had a shot at that game and just couldn't. Yeah, couldn't close yeah, it for out. Sure, man. I mean, they they definitely. You know, whether you want to blame it the free throw line, the three point line, whatever, they, they turned over the ball a lot more than UCLA, which everyone coming into the game I think thought it was going to be the opposite scenario. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple other notes here before we get to the final four picks. We're going to be bringing on Scott Bowser here in just a second. This is the first time the final four all teams, all four teams came uh, west of the Mississippi. That's kind of an interesting nugget. Uh, most upsets of all time. Oh, uh, really? Based off of uh, Norlander tweeted this. Uh, based B- off by volume, uh, yeah, five seed gap, <laughs> five seed gap. Oh, okay. is how th- they grade it traditionally as an upset. I didn't know that prior to him tweeting this. So basically, six eleven or better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most upsets ever in NCAA history. Okay. So, yeah. Gonzaga uh, six and zero against the spread. They have a chance, or or I guess if they cover, they cover the next two games. They can go six and zero. Only seven teams have ever done that. So, I mean, that's and again, if they would cover, they would obviously go undefeated. Which again, historic run there by Gonzaga. And and last little note, uh, Pac twelve thirteen and four and <laughs> and very good against the spread and probably fourteen and four if Oregon were to play that first game. Against VMI. That's true. Uh, yeah, VCU. VCU. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, dominating performance by the Pac 12. Want to give a shout out to BetQL. That's right, BetQL. You want to bet smarter, not harder? You can do it with BetQL. Use that promo code March30 to get 30% off the entire year of BetQL. Baseball, it's coming. It's here. Opening day is tomorrow or today, if you're depending on when you're listening to the podcast. Every pick, every day. They also got NBA player props. They're giving it to you. Uh, all sorts of picks, predictions, player data, whatever you need. Where the sharps are at, where the squares are at. BetQL.com has you covered. Use that promo code March thirty and get thirty percent off the entire year. Also, want to shout out Odds Crowd. That's right, Odds Crowd. Their March Madness contest right now. I am currently in first place over on the Odds Still Crowd eligible. contest. Still eligible. Still el- nice. Right now, as scheduled, pulling home five thousand dollars. <laughs> can I hang on? What are you gonna do with that five thousand dollars? Stay Dean? tuned. Probably buy some. Why beers. are you trying to jinx it? <laughs> this is like you crowning USC. <laughs> what? what? I'm going. To, uh, Alan Cooley nipping at my heels in second place. They have a two thousand dollar season long MLB contest. They also have a five hundred dollar weekly contest. Again, all their fantasy betting contests completely free. App super easy to use. Highly recommend checking it out. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds. Okay, now bringing on our guest, joining us online. He is the host of the Luck Stops Here podcast and a giant UCLA Bruins pr- pr- fan. Pretty sure he believes in crystals too. <laughs> uh, Scott Bowser, Bowser, what's happening, man? 
I think Scott might be muted. I, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> Scott Bowser, you're on this. There, oh, he is. there we go. He's unmuted. He's here. Scott, how? <laughs> Walk us through your. Exp- I've seen Bowser Jack before. He brings an incredible amount of energy. What? Uh, <laughs> Walk us through you watching this UCLA run and in particular that Michigan game. Oh man, like that Michigan game, I honestly, like eight minutes in, I knew we had them. Like once it was like eight, four sitting there and they're, they're just playing defense, 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 every possession. It's like, it's a matter of time before Juzang gets loose. And then next thing you know, he's knocking down jumpers all over the place. And it was I, right then I knew it was game over. I mean, I mean, you got a Mick Cronin. The defensive angle that he's been doing, oh, such an underrated hire. Does anyone else just uncomfortable? Like, does anyone else get like uncomfortable looking at Cronin? Like you're looking at a sick person <laughs> when they, it's a little he unsettling. It, this he, is a beautiful does. city. I mean, come on. But, but dude, I mean, th- this is something that he, they were ridiculed in their, I mean, in their hiring process, and then settling for Cronin, who came over from Cincinnati. He was the difference. Held Alabama with 28 first half points. Michigan 23. I mean. What was your first uh, reaction to the Cronin hiring? I, I, I'm 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 curious to see if you were a fan, and and now obviously I think you love the guy. You probably want to uh, have him to your place I mean, and, and Henderson I mean, or dude, wherever the after, hell you're at. After Steve Alford, I I was honestly <laughs> they, they could have brought back Steve Lavin for all I gave a shit. Oh. Like it, <laughs> hey, it friend really of the program, <laughs> don't it say really that. didn't matter to me, man. Like I was just like, thank God we got rid of that guy. And Cronin to me kind of reminded reminded me of the Howland hire, who I love where, you know, defense first, you know, coming from a more of a Midwest program that people don't, you know, maybe the fans on the West coast don't quite understand what's going on with that. But I knew those pit teams were good that Hallen was coaching same way. I knew those Cincinnati teams that Cronin was building were good. So, well, it, I mean, it, obviously it's paying off like, and, and walk us through this defense, because I feel like the defense they're playing now wasn't in was they weren't playing this kind of defense in they the regular season. No, what? and and what do no. you think? It does seem like a, a, f- a switch has been flipped since they started this tournament run, taking the defense to another level. What do you what do you attribute that to, Scott? I think part of that was losing Chris Smith right before conference, right? You know, the peak of conference play kind of there. And he was the best defender. You know, he's a classic three and D wing, you know, with length who provided mismatch problems. And now like you lose a guy like that. They kind of had to retool the whole de- defense during conference play. And as you know, this conference was tough as shit this year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, well, we now know, yeah. we, but, but like three weeks ago, the PAC 12 was an embarrassment, but I mean, that's I, just, that's just uh, cause Larry Scott, cause we can't find the fucking games. Um, no. But uh, overall though, man, I mean, look, UCLA, I, I saw people outraged that, Oh, Michigan would have won if they had livers. They don't even realize that UCLA was doing, was doing this without their leading scorer at the time. And also Jalen Hill, their big man. Uh, and, and yeah. also let's add in the fact that they had their top recruit stolen by the G league, right? As yeah. the season was going to tip station Knicks. Yeah, man. Like, no, this, this team's a, a big, t- it's funny to say like a UCLA team with 11, 12 national championship banners is an underdog story, but they are this year and it's a pretty cool one. Well, and it's think, funny that well, and, Gonzaga and, is the big bad here and UCLA is the little guy. It's well, great. It re- really reminds me of 2006 that yeah. Adam Morris. Oh the, man, the, the narrative, man. Like the, the fact that everyone was just like dead on arrival, arrival, the blue bloods this year, but UCLA. Uh, I mean, they're literally blue. And and to your point, like this is the ultimate ironic switch of, of like David is now Goliath. Goliath is now David. And I said it in the sweet 16, this is a UCLA program that has won a lot. And they were very, they were happy to be at the sweet 16 at this stage yeah. and, and Mick Cronin's career over there. So, I mean, this is an unbelievable spot. The tables have been turned. I just, you know what? I, I, I love that UCLA is there. I, I j- in any other year, in any other opportunity, this is a this is great. Col- I just they they've walked into a but pl- play the buzzsaw sound drop, please. <laughs> that's, that's Oregon State, buddy. Well, uh, and and Cr- Kramer is wearing his Gonzaga jersey, so I'm worried. I, I little- see that. I see that. I got you guys on my TV right now, and I I see that. And you know, he's been fading them against. In the Michigan game, he's right. fading them in the Alabama game. Yes. And he's eaten a shit sandwich the last couple of <laughs> years. So keep bringing it.
You're well, right. It, and, <laughs> and, and, I've been bad against UCLA yeah, lately. <laughs> he doesn't have UCLA figured out, which I think is good for UCLA backers if they're going to take that the points. Fourteen and a half, guys. Come on. Well, and, and 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 to that point of the spread, this is a historic spread for a Final Four. I mean, an all timer by a decent margin. I mean, you talk at some of the other like biggest spreads of all time in the Final Four: Duke beating Michigan State. Uh, 68, 62 as an 11 and a half point favorite, Wichita state. They were a 10 point dog. Uh, they lost by four UNC winning uh, 83, 66 against Syracuse as a 10 point favorite. Only time a, a big final four spread was actually covered. So I think that helps the UCLA case. What hurts it besides how like mojo wise is the fact that they were, uh, they were already going nuts at UCLA. I mean, we we like generally like to fade teams who treat a, a victory as their Super Bowl win, and they were there were some fires, you know, uh. COVID compliant <laughs> riots going on in Westwood. <laughs> but dude, circle circle the fact. I, I I'll get back to this all day. Why did I take UCLA against Alabama? Oats, everyone was on Oats, and, and Nate Oats always the he's a the best hire, and, and Nate Oats is a great coach. But yeah. you give. A look, Mick Cronin comes from Rick Patino. We can say all we want about his thirty <laughs> seconds in in the bathroom stall, to know right? To come. And, and the prostitution <laughs> ring. But it, it, the fact is, Rick Patino can flat out coach. Yep. He's proved this at Boston. Yes. He's proved this at Providence. Proved this in Greece. And Mick yep. Cronin giving him five days to dial up his defense. I promise. I was you. just gonna say this, Colby. Man, give give Cronin some time here. Oh man. I like this 14 and a half a lot. And I think, I think they can sprinkle that money line, man. Oh, I thought stop it, it. I, yes. plus yes. dude. Well, yes. and, and a couple, a couple other things worth noting. It would be awesome if they can, if they can make drew uh Timmy cry, like uh, Adam Morrison did. <laughs> Uh, and I think in the same way they, they uh, how are you going to compare those two people? Adam Morrison never had they they just sweet have sweet facial he, hair. He status. played for he had, <laughs> he had long had like a, hair and was he a had like a weird I, I feminine. Like, isn't he like sitting in a bunker in Spokane with like seven hundred I mean, rifles right now? He he's crying. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> crying. Pretty, that's pretty, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a real pussy move. Go hide. <laughs> go hide. Yeah. Go ne- go use your guns. Uh, Wyoming, of course, one of the last states to download the college experience. So I don't know why you're. Hopping on I that said Spokane. Well, I said oh, Spokane. Washington. We, we, okay. And, and we, and they, they've treated us kind. You know what I mean? I Dick, think- the way they slow down Dickinson and uh, Wagner as his, uh, you know, fellow. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm always questionable about people from uh, German descent, you know, going all the way yeah, back just to World go by, War and Just go by Wagner, man. Americanize <laughs> yourself. Don't remind us that you're you're a descendant of a war. Criminal. Yeah, who know, we, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to investigate some of the artwork he has in his dorm room. Franz, I, I I think the fact that their their interior defense really showed me something down that stretch against Michigan, and and they're gonna need that kind of clogging of the lane and slowing things down and and making Timmy not get to his spots because that kid is money inside. And I think they're going to be able to hang with the, uh, with the guards on the outside and play enough uh, three point defense. It's really going to all come down to the rebounding and the defensive in um, the defense inside the paint worth noting the UCLA is above average in defensive rebound to the point that they led the pac 12 in defensive rebounding rate this season, which now that we've seen how well the pac 12 has played, especially in this yeah. tournament, I think it matters more. Yeah, I mean, and remember too, it's like, like you know, I mentioned all the injuries, but it's like they got Yaquez playing basically a four, and he's a six six swing man. You know, like they're doing it with grit. I, this really reminds me of that 2016 that was led by Aaron Oflalo, Jordan Farmar, and it was just a bunch of scrappy guys: Luke Richard, Mumba Mute, Alfred Aboya. It was just a lot of gritty, scrappy guys that were willing to hustle for that each possession and. And play each possession like it's your last kind of thing. Does this team yeah, have I that mean, many NBA players? Is that that? I mean, well, Jazang is going to be for I, sure. I, I yeah. agree. They have uh, a couple, but yeah. that the team you just you just named was, I mean, they had some talent. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, that was before they even got Westbrook on that team too, and Darren <laughs> Collison. So I mean, that team was loaded to the gills. I think Collison was a, re, a freshman reserve on that team, actually. But yeah, no, I mean. I, I don't know. I, I think Juzang's a, definitely an NBA guy. I think Jacquez in the right system could really, you know, sit there and make tough shots. You know, S- like, speaking of Adam Morrison, that he kind of reminds me of Adam Morrison. His game is very hmm. Adam Morrison, where you're like, man, really, I think really, he's a little tougher. I think he's a little tougher yeah, than Morrison. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, he's a lot tougher. I mean, he's not oh. like 
Adam Morrison looked, he, he looked like a dandelion could knock him over. You know, like you could shave off his wispy mustache and punch him in the face with it, and it's going to knock the guy out. But. You know, you uh, looking at this game, you know who I think is going to be the key to the game for UCLA. I, obviously, Juzang no. has, to, has to keep shooting well. I'm going to go to. This kid, Jules Bernard, mm. I, he he had a really bad shooting stretch, going from the end of the Alabama game to a big portion of the Michigan game, only putting up four points. If he can start hitting it, and he seemed to find his shot late in that game, kind of when they needed it, I think they're going to need his scoring to be in this game, and I I think he can deliver. If if Bernard can get you fifteen <laughs> points, I think UCLA is a live dog. Uh, yeah, I, I agree on that one. And I think what they really need to get going is Tiger Campbell. Uh, I was just about to him, go there, man. Tiger, he's get, really get fun. Him going on those, those like when he, every time he drives, he has that killer pull up mid mid range game. And then he can also, I mean, he, dude, he's nasty around the rim, even though he's a little guard. Like I really feel like if they can really get that going. It could really open up Juzang and Jacques for some wide open threes. And, that, and another guy like keep an eye on is uh, he hasn't played much the last couple of games is, David Singleton. He's a guard off the bench. He's a good three point shooter, solid defender. He could possibly play a factor in this one. And, and UCLA's bench. I think I was talking to, uh, or Decker was bringing that up in our, in our mini uh, group chat, group text we have going there. But the what do you bench have really UCLA had- lubed up uh, group <laughs> chat over there. Funny, I wasn't invited. Uh, just a couple of Bruins. Uh, just for the winners, record, winners only. Ryan. I did back UCLA the first three rounds of this tournament. And a couple of those were locked. So everyone needs to slow their fucking roll because I have been slinging winners. All right. Now well, get back to your well, Kramer, fucking- make, make the case for uh, Gonzaga. I, certainly it's pretty obvious. They're 30 and oh, they've, they, they've won by double digits every game except West Virginia. However, this is a historic spread for the final four. And right. I do think teams Just- get a little tight long layoff uh, pause, and then pause. coming back on that Saturday pause. So, so first I think the fact that like everyone's just stuck there, I think some of the showing up going to play a basketball game in a football stadium, I think some of that, that rust, and we were kind of debating the over under earlier. I, yeah. I think some of that you have to take out this year. The other thing I'd say is uh, it's fun to say, Hey, this is the biggest spread in the history of the final four. It is. It is fun. Um, but how many teams have gotten to the final four laying 20 points every game, laying 15 points every game? And and I would, I, there's probably not many of those either. So, well, and, and how many teams typically point, historic how, teams will have an historic spread? So, I think this is more the spread is more a product of how good Gonzaga is, not how much UCLA is being disrespected. Because when Cousin Mush texted me last two how, nights ago, how many or last, good coaches have they faced? I nailed this spread. I was asked, what would this spread be? I said, 14. I still like Gonzaga. I just think you have to make it this big. It's just the pure way that they do power ranking. Sean, you know how this works. Mm. This is a product. I of, have a model. This is a product of power rankings. And, and, and your model would probably tell you this too, that this number needed to be big. Well, and this Kramer, number is always going to be you're big. Barry in the lead. Who does cousin Bush like? I, I don't know. Actually, <laughs> I, he's not putting Gonzaga in a parlay money line. Uh, uh, no, I think I think the the whole point of this uh, he d- he did seem like he was angling towards a Gonzaga Baylor <laughs> money line parlay, but he said the number same thing you're saying the number's too big, mm. a- and so anyone who gambles and just blindly trusts their instincts, yes, without first talking to the crystal, Sean, mm. are probably going to be like, of course I'm taking the points here. But I would I would counter with I, you broke down a UCLA Gonzaga game and you said Timmy more than any single person on UCLA because th- this team is loaded this team has dudes who are great college players this team has dudes who are going to be great NBA players and this is best coach by a mile I don't know that mm. I do uh, not Cronin, know that Cronin this is is, is playing is yes. coaching out of his and mind every and team, much like Doug Peterson in that 2017 run there we go. the right there we go I, I'm so intrigued though and I, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse because I mentioned this every episode but I, and I get it I'll credit Gonzaga for for or Gonzaga whatever the fuck it is no, to, to 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 gung like Gonzaga like Kung Pao Kung <laughs> gung but look I I they have I don't know if it's just Enfield can't coach. I don't know what, but, or just 
they're that talented that they just be careful make everyone else discrediting USC just uh, because I, they I didn't got like the, USC all year, man. I, I thought they were a weird team. They kind of were an outlier. USC. Well, look, but I even said, I go, I, someone's going to slow them down. That's Someone, true. And, I, and they were a top 10 defensive team. And UCLA is the master we, of slowing we, pace. We, and we saw Kramer, that against bring Alabama. Up that, yes. Bring up that fucking Ken we, Palm kid. I'll bring it and, up. And uh, show me pace for he's UCLA. He's probably our age, but, but real quick, let me just finish the, <laughs> we, we said, you know what? Nor Norfolk state that that team looked pretty good. No, well, they came out, got rolled by 40. Oh, we Oklahoma. Well, this, that's because that's because Colby live at 36, <laughs> Oklahoma. This is a team with some, some ballers. Like no, this, they were missing their second game, best player. 16 points. Oh, come Creighton, on. Creighton from the big East. They, they're certainly going to keep up. They're going to score with them. Right? 18 point blowout USC, a very talented Name me one good coach so far that you think is like just a great coach. Well, I think Colby, you're like much like many of your arguments, you quickly flock to one side or the other. And if you're trying to tell me that you're going to put Mick Cronin in, in the category of great coaches, not yet, but I think he obviously, dude, he was written. Anyway, he, this is I, a guy who comes from Rick Patino. The, the point right? you like Patino, I get it. Patino, Patino's not here. All right, Daddy's not coming out to help him. Well, I mean, he does have his dad who's <laughs> in the stands. And, uh, and, Mick Cronin. Well, and they yeah. and he, Cronin. shout out he, to the new sister Jean. Well, and I. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bowser keeps posting these uh, Prince Philip memes, but I, I he kind of reminds me of Hep Cronin, unfortunately. <laughs> Hep, underrated name needs to come back. Hep C really took that one out. I yeah, feel like. re, re, yeah, calling everyone <laughs> same no, people hey, got guys, the Hep. Guys, I, I just want to let you all know too. I'm sitting on a 150 to one UCLA ticket that I bought a little while ago, oh and a, and a 20 to one Houston ticket. So Ooh. having two nice tickets still in the final four is ba a fantastic feeling to have right now. Tell Ooh. me that's a physical ticket for UCLA. No, it's on my app. Dude. Oh. Yeah. Boom. I know. Cause then you can frame you can that. Take, I, yeah, I wish I could take it over there and have a print one out. You should you, when they win, because they're definitely going to win. No, but but uh, let's talk about that tempo though, because I mean, what they what did they do against Alabama that really Alabama had this crazy tempo that they would play at? Yeah, Paul West had philosophy, and they completely shut that tempo down, made Alabama kind of a fish out of water. Yeah, I expect. No, I get it. They have Alabama's, by the way, a team that's probably got three or four NBA players on it. Um, so UCLA back in the same situation. I can't believe. I can't believe you guys. What you're you taking take, fourteen and a half points? Yeah, I I can believe you. I mean, but Dude, you, I, I, me, I, I you're talking UCLA to the money line against Michigan. Talking, why would I fade them now? You're talking to the leader of the odds crowd contest, Ryan. So watch, watch what you're, uh, watch what you're dropping. <laughs> yeah, I took some screenwriting I'm, classes I'm, at UCLA. I'm done, you know, I'm got done, it done with this segment. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was really nice seeing people like before the game yesterday posting screenshots of their parlays where all it needed was Michigan and me kind of sitting there going. We're about to ruin a lot of these guys' nights, and this I know. is going to be fantastic. Once the other favorites won, I was like, "Fuck." Kramer, are these the uh, correct times for these games? I don't know. I thought so, but okay. a lot, a lot of ins and a lot of outs today. Uh, at, at least we're finally back to the regular schedule for the Final Four weekend with Saturday and Monday, because this like Saturday through Tuesday shit really threw me for a loop. Well, I mean, I think you may want to get used to it yeah. because they had historic ratings for the Sweet Sixteen. It doubled the All Sweet right. Sixteen, doubled the NBA Finals ratings. Well, highest the highest ratings of the NBA highest finals, ratings yeah. since uh, 1993 for the Sweet Sixteen, which is kind of crazy. Considering what do you think it was? Yes. What do you think it was? I think it's it's basketball. Be I mean, I think <laughs> that the parody, the parody of college basketball right now is a good <laughs> thing for the sport. I can't believe you yeah. asked Colby this. It's, it's because they parody. Let mid majors what do you mean play it's not the parody? This has not <laughs> Every other sport suffered during this it's time. Because of gambling. It's because now way Colby, more we're we're about to have a championship game played between the two teams that were the best all year. That's what we're going to have. Uh, and so there's like, how's your Michigan play? You told me that about Michigan. How's that? How's that doing right now? Buddy? Well, they lost. Huh? They lost, but we still have two ones and a two in the final four. And two mid majors. All right, it's a two seed. <laughs> it's a two seed. Like, parody has nothing to How do. How come with everyone watching. shits on Gonzaga every year? And the one year that they actually, uh, you know, are actually winning, you're now saying, oh, it's expected. Every year they're like, oh, they're fraudulent. That's been everyone's mo on Gonzaga. But now you're going to give it merit. What are you talking about? This is a different team. You know, this is a different team. This Drew is, Timmy was on last year's team. All right, but I mean, this is an undefeated team that's not coming close. They came close once to Baylor, and everyone was like, "See, see, they might lose." 
All right, I'm officially going with UCLA <laughs> plus fourteen. Also, buddies over at BetQL, they have UCLA plus fourteen as a three star play. Bowser, I assume you're on UCLA. Can you absolutely? Can you give us I'm a score pr- prediction? I'm sprinkling that money line too, and hey, you know what? I think this is a good one to bust Hashtag out the old standby. Only. The, the first half under. Ooh. I think UCLA is going to slow this down. Uh, try and get this tempo going as slow as possible from the from opening tip. And I can, uh, I can feel, I, feel, I really feel that first half under coming here. I mean, the last two first half unders have hit pretty easily for them. And I can see that continuing here. Yeah. Kramer, uh, the people in the slack, they've, they've kind of just taken the first half unders and even though Every we advise, <laughs> even though we advise that it's only a round one thing and first four, Bro. they just kept doing it, and it, it Bro, looked like you, it was on the decent run. You experience run. pussy. You're not like ah, <laughs> it's not for me. I'm gonna wait till next year for more of that yeah. pussy. The people, the idea of waiting an entire calendar year to bet on the first half unders, it was too much for the fans. I, I they mean, just had to we're get back joking, in. but we might as well just lean into first five, first five inning unders. Just yeah. just uh, find a system around MLB, that, yeah. baby. <laughs> We, may, we are the under crowd. We are the, uh, we are the under Kings and uh, Bowser mentioned uh, UCLA money line. Win has the them on the money line at plus seven fifty. So that's a massive dog uh, total sitting at one forty five and a half. and a half. I'm going to go, you know, since we only have a couple games, I'm going to go, I'm going to say I'm going uh, under on the total here as well. If we're doing some uh, bonus plays on the total. Oh, I, I mean, Kramer, you're on the over in Gonzaga. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm about as chalky as. I mean, I just like let, be real, real talk, real quick. Yes. How, how does this game not go over? Uh, again, I I think they slow unless UCLA doesn't score that that. Uh, but they've been so hot. That's why I think it has to go over. Right, and I I think I think it's just really high. I I think this is going to be like a eighty two, you know. S- uh, I, uh, hold on, I have to do the math again. Seventy-five. <laughs> this is this feels like a seventy-five, you know, sixty-eight game. Uh, and I won't I won't reveal who I think is actually going to win. But uh, I like UCLA <laughs> plus fourteen. But you're Kramer. You're going over on the one forty-five yes. and a half. Over. Colby, you got to play on the total. Uh, I will go under as well. Um, look, Wisconsin. I don't like this. 2015 Kentucky, the last undefeated team that had made it all the way to the final four, got upset by Wisconsin. Bruins are going to do it here. Okay, uh, Bowser. Before we get, let you go and make sure you uh, follow Scott Bowser on Twitter, Scott underscore Bowser. Give uh, make sure you subscribe to the Luck Stop Here podcast. Available wherever great podcasts are downloaded. Bowser, give us a final score. Oh, I'm going to go uh, UCLA 69 and Gonzaga 60, 62. It's going to be a close dog fight the whole way through. And then Gonzaga is going to get frustrated down the end. And they're going to be really aggressive with those fouls when they know they're losing. It's going to be great. All right. Love it. Best of luck, uh, Bowser. Appreciate you calling in. Thanks, guys. Let it ride. Hell yeah. Okay. We got uh Dan Leach coming up in a second. <laughs> in some bleed through there on the Zoom, Ryan. <laughs> that was Bowser. Once again. This, hey, the f- we just gave out a bunch of free picks. Make sure you check out all the free picks over at pickswise.com. Every game, every sport, MLB, NBA. Obviously, college basketball. They have a uh, pixwise.com slash March Dash Madness page going there. Make sure you check that out. They got that ten thousand uh, dollar Capra contest coming to an end there. Check out uh, who's gonna take home the big prize. Follow their picks if you like. But again, every every game, every sport, they got you covered. Picks are completely free. If they're free, it's for me. Pixwise.com is the place to be. Also want to shout out better edge. That's right. You want a better edge when it comes to sports gambling. How about no vig? You're going to be betting on a ton of MLB baseball. No vig better edge.com. They got you cover legal in 40 States. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Yes, please. Better edge.com. It's the better way to bet and just go to B E T T O R edge.com. Use that promo code SGP. Get a free $10 bet. What better way to try out an app, a new system, then a free ten dollar play over at b e t t o r edge dot com promo code s g 
P. Kramer is our guest uh, with us. I, I the, you know what? We're bringing him in from the, the the intern is bringing him in from the waiting room. Here he is, joining us on the line, host on ninety seven one the the ticket in Detroit. Dan Leach, Dan, how's it going, man? Dan. Fantastic. I, I woke up about two hours ago. I went to bed at like 10 in the morning. I was on an emotional high, low, high, low, and then throw up on the way back from Indy, but I'm great. And it's great to be with you guys. Well, uh, I'm pretty- sorry, but I, I feel like we're somewhat responsible. I, I didn't, when I reached out yesterday, I was like, you guys kind of reminded me like, well, maybe Michigan won't win. And I was like, Oh shit. I didn't even think about that. Fuck Now, Dan, obviously a huge Michigan fan, Detroit guy. You, you went to the game. What was oh, it? So what awesome. was it like uh, watching live? Well, I'll tell you this guys. It's, it's one of these things where, you know, I'm a, I'm a hopeless romantic. I, I much rather have loved and have lost and not loved at all. I'm yes. definitely super grateful. I was there. It listen, as, as I've been able to do, luckily throughout my career, I've covered a ton of events as a as a journalist. So I don't get to go to a lot of things as a fan, especially as a Michigan fan, which is you know my all time favorite team, along with the long suffering stupid Detroit Lions. <laughs> it was incredible. I mean, there it said the, the attendance. They said there was eight thousand. There was definitely more than eight thousand, but it was seventy percent Michigan fans. I had a lot of friends there. A lot of my friends in the media that were actually went to cover the very few that were covering. And the atmosphere was incredible, whether it was outside Lucas oil at the bars at Shapiro's deli, the famous deli, right by the stadium at a little rare roast beef. Don't tell anybody it's Passover. I'm Jewish, but I had to do it. I did it for the LSU game. They won. I couldn't skip it. I love it. Uh, I love I was very, he was very mad though. Uh, I love but it. You it was, have a, you have a lucky meal tied to roast beef. This guy's my hero already. Yeah. You gotta do the rare roast beast. So it, it really was incredible, but you know, let, let's be honest. Michigan had, I don't know, 574 chances uh-huh. and they blew them all. And still with 0.5 left, they get the ball. They have a, a they, I don't like the fact necessarily. I'm not like really angry. They took the two threes. I would have liked them to try to get into Dickinson, even though he had the ball the last play, but they got two good looks. Yeah. Everything was there. And like you guys lost, but I was no, more nervous, way more nervous for the LSU game. Than I was for last night, especially after seeing what Gonzaga did at USC. I know Gonzaga is at a different level, but when you look at what UCLA had done throughout the tournament, they slow it down. It's all about their shooting. I said that we had to contain them from outside. And, you know, Michigan had still, now playing maybe one of their worst games of the year, still had a chance five different times at the end of the game, and they couldn't get it done. Well, and, and and looking at this Michigan season, do you consider this a success? I mean, you got to the elite yeah. eight, but you were also so close to getting to the final four as a Michigan yeah. fan. Are you happy with the season? Well, and it's a great question. Guys, I'm one of those kind of people and one of those kind of fans that I don't like to make excuses. And I, I don't like to say playing with house money. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes if you know, you're UCLA, you're playing with house money. Yeah. If you're, you know, Abilene, you're playing with house money. <laughs> I think with what we saw from, for the Wolverines this year, and, and I got to point out Juwan Howard. And I know you guys have talked about this many times, but Juwan Howard has been incredible. Yeah. When he got hired. I liked it. I wasn't going crazy. I love John Beeline. I, I, I covered him for years and I, we were all shocked, but Juwan Howard, the connectivity he has, the synergy he has watching him coach, you know, and, and be connected to his guys, especially after the whole livers thing, which I'll get to in a second. He's been incredible, but I, I, they were, they were easily one of the best three teams all year. Yes, Baylor at times looked better. Yes, Gonzaga was the best. But there were times where Michigan looked like they were just as good in a better conference as Gonzaga was. I mean, I know Gonzaga is kind of in a class of their own, but they play the West Coast Conference. So to me, I'm disappointed. Yes, great year. Any, I mean, I, we have this uh, huge thing we call the sickness, the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry. <laughs> They've been in nine Final Fours under Izzo. They've only won once. So Final Fours are great, it, but it's not winning. And to me, I thought we should have beat UCLA. It's not like we lost to a better team. We just didn't play well. And all credit to them. They play great in big moments. But that's why I'm a little frustrated. And I felt that they could beat UCLA and give Gonzaga a run. I thought we'd probably lose, but we would have had a chance. I think we would have been the toughest matchup of Gonzaga's season. And I know Oklahoma gave them a run for a minute, but they still got killed. <laughs> and Gonzaga's at this other level. They're another stratosphere. But I wanted to see that game. I wanted to see Gonzaga be a five or six point favorite for the first time all year in Michigan. 
you have their chance with, uh, you know, a guy like Dickinson down low to go against Timmy and to shoot it outside with Brooks and, 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 and Fra- Hans and Franz Wagner. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> They're here to pump you up. Well, pump now you, you, <laughs> you watched UCLA. You saw them in person to me. I, I had UCLA in the points, but I, I, I didn't like them on the money line. Cause I, I was like you, I thought Michigan would advance and move on Kramer. And I had them, uh, you know, in uh, futures for the final four. I had them winning in my bracket. But I, I thought they'd be able to the two man game that they had been running. I thought that would be enough to carry them. Do do you think UCLA's defense can do enough to make it a game uh, uh, against Gonzaga? Well, I, I don't think that you know you're going to get a, a fifty point game from choosing again. That was crazy. <laughs> I, I think their defense is good enough to make Gonzaga possibly question themselves. But I, I was at the Gonzaga game before. If people didn't know, they're on two different courts. And Lucas Oil, so you had to get two separate tickets. But I wanted to go watch them, and I thought I was scouting for the Michigan game. I guess I wasn't. <laughs> but they're they're just at a different level. When you look what they bring to the table with all the different you know options they have, and obviously Timmy being the main one. But just to look at what what you know a, a Kisper can do and a Suggs can do, and and Watson, they just got so many out. They play such good defense. UCLA, they the thing that was interesting, guys, last night. Is that UCLA wants to slow it down, and they Michigan had the, the you know kind of a, not a big lead, but a decent lead early and could have extended it. But UCLA kept hitting threes. I, I saw it as okay. UCLA wants to slow it down. Michigan's like, you know what? Juwan's like, fine. We'll play your style, and we'll beat you at your own style. I don't think UCLA can do that to Gonzaga. Gonzaga just literally took the lid off the building and made USC look like a wicked stepchild. If they do that early on against UCLA, they're not coming back against Gonzaga. So can't, do they have a chance? How can they not? They're an 11 seed in the final four, the second ever first four to the final four, but watching those two games and watching Gonzaga and then watching us, I, I thought we're obviously the better team Michigan against uh, the, the Bruins, but they found a way to get it done. And in the big moments made big shots, especially after the Juzang injury. I, I, I just, I mean, I know it's an historic 14 point spread. I, I pick, predict it to be like 12, 14 nuts, but that's Gonzaga. I, I think it will be a game for a minute, but by the end of the first half, before you play Gonzaga, it'll be up by 15. One of the things I think that is underlooked ever we're talking Mick Cronin's defense. And obviously they've done great, especially in the first half against Bama and uh, Michigan, yeah. but they're not turning the ball over you for Gonzaga. I, I go back to the Creighton game. They turned it over uh, 16 times. They turned it over 10, uh, you know, against USC, which is decent. But uh, I, I think Cronin can have some success, even with the skill of Gonzaga. I think that is underrated is tiger Campbell's taking great uh, care of the basketball. What do you, what do you make of that situation? That's a, that's such a great point. And, and Tiger Campbell, and I was, I, I I'm forgetting the actual stat last night. I know Michigan obviously turned it over 14, 14 times, which is really bad for Michigan. And then the Bruins only eight. I think you look at Tiger Campbell, and that's, that's why he is such a great point guard and they don't make mistakes. And, and Michigan played such great deliberate offense. Like I mentioned, they kind of came down and wanted to play with you. They, they tried to match what you, UCLA wanted to do. And I think when you look at, you know, what UCLA can do, and you mentioned Cronin style going back to Cincinnati, how rough and tumble as guys are, but they don't make mistakes. And if you don't make mistakes against a team like Gonzaga and you're scoring, you can be in that kind of game. But it's just certain these teams of destiny that we think they are, they always seem like Oregon State, you know, it, it ended. They obviously had that nice little comeback, a little backdoor cover for me, by the way. That was a miracle. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. I, I just think when you, when you go against a team like Gonzaga this year and your UCLA, they have got to play not just perfect, they've got to get lucky. But you make a great point about Tiger Campbell and not turning the ball over much and being really deliberate and looking for the best options, you know, third, fourth, fifth different options running all. I mean, both teams are running almost all the way down to the end of the, the shot clock on most possessions. And that's that was just really great fun fundamental basketball to watch, but UCLA is going to have to make so few mistakes and Gonzaga's going to have to make a ton of them. Even if UCLA plays their best game, they're still going to probably have to get lucky and Gonzaga's going to have to make them, you know, kind of shoot themselves in the foot. Kind of the way that Michigan could have taken a 10 or more point lead in the first half, but they kind of let, you know, UCLA back in. Yeah, they kept them alive. You know, so it sounds like you, you like Gonzaga to, to win and move on as you should as a 14 point favorite, but 
you're close yeah. to maybe taking UCLA and the 14 points. Where where are you landing on the line here, Dan? There is no chance I am laying 14 points in yes. a national semifinal. I'm the I mean, only the one with you see. I'm the only one with balls around here. I'm laying well, the you points. Got the let's jersey on, let's so yeah. fucking go, baby. <laughs> But I'll just say this, you know, there's a reason the teams get to a final four. You can't be luck the whole way. UCLA obviously was a team that lost one of their best players early in the year. And they're, they're a very good team. They're very well coached by Cronin. Yes. It's a totally different level when they're playing a team like Gonzaga, but they're there for a reason. Michigan's really good. And they beat us last night. So 14 points is insane. Love the it. thing is though, I probably am not going to touch the game, but if I had to make a, a, a pick right now, I would take UCLA plus the 14 because I believe they can keep themselves within distance late in the game where maybe they hit a late three and they, you know, get it down to 13 or something. But, you know, after I saw what God did to USC yesterday, you should have seen all the USC fans. They were just really sitting on their hands and throwing popcorn <laughs> at each other for 80%. Of that. It was great. Uh, yeah, a lot of the, I saw the you know the the, the metrosexual <laughs> Trojan guys with their wacky haircuts, the hot girls, the wax, just st- wax eyebrows. Other, there were some good ones. There were some hot girls there for sure. Oh yeah, I, I, that's, I, Southern, I that's Southern California well, for you. I got to hit on this though. Ken Palm, oh. uh, Gonzaga, fifth rated defense. Alabama yeah. was third. U- UCLA only had seven turnovers against Alabama. I like I like the Bruins to get it done on the money line. You're crazy. All right, let's talk Ooh, about the game with, line. on the money line. the money line. On the money line. line. Let's talk about a game. Let's talk about a game with a reasonable spread. <laughs> now, yeah, moving over to Baylor, laying four and a half against Houston. I, again, I I haven't been able to figure out this Houston team to save my life. Uh, but that being said, I'm fading that. I took them last round. They I, they got backdoored, but I I love what I'm seeing out of this Baylor team. And Houston, you, you kind of look at their path to the final four. They beat a 15 seed in Cleveland state. They barely beat a 10 seed Rutgers. Yep. They, they beat a Syracuse team, which I loved, but man, they just look like complete dog shit. They laid a complete egg, buddy, uh, buddy Bayheim there just yeah. dropped a real deuce Off at the farm. <laughs> and then, and then they get another 12 seed in Oregon state who, again, playing out of their minds, probably shouldn't have been a 12 seed Four double digit seeds. Now you're playing against this Baylor team that really that, that second half of the Nova game, they kind of showed why they are a, a one seed. Um, I think they get it done laying four and a half, uh, but I don't know. I, I, I've, I've struggled with fade in Houston all year. Kramer, where are you at with Houston Baylor? I mean, I think in if I were to go back in time, yeah, which I know I can't, I haven't figured it out yet, and 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 think about that we discussed this at the beginning of the tournament, right? This whole year, the cream has risen to the top. The cream has risen to the top, and to Dan's point, it did feel like Michigan was part of that cream at one mm. point, but the rest of the time it was Baylor and it was Gonzaga, and so. For me to pick anything other than chalk right now with the heater that I've been on, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I told you I would have made this line closer to seven. My true number, Sean, yes. 8.2. Uh, I no. just, I just, after Houston fucked us last round, yeah, it brutal. was obvious. Like, it, it got emotional. And now it's, a, and this Baylor it team, feels personal. this is a professional team. I, I don't love the coaching uh, advantage here for Baylor, but the way they're playing, the way they're getting done, and the, you got to take something from a team like Houston who completely lost interest with that game and let they let Oregon state come back in that game. And then they showed us something. They showed us that they had no clue, like many bad teams, how to deal with a one, three, one <laughs> and why more coaches don't just throw that out from time to time. Yeah. And, and the way they mixed up the zones uh, multiple so times, I thought it was I great expect coaching. Baylor to, to come in here and yes, they're not the defensive team that Oregon state is, uh, but I would argue that they're, they're probably comparable and they can play a lot better offense. So I think Houston loses the track meet in this one as well. I'm, I'm not really on the under train. Sean. Mm. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm laying I'm ba- Baylor all day. I think the two best, we see the two best teams meet in the final, which has been a hot debate in the offices of the SGPN lately, expanding a playoff gives more teams opportunity, but we still end up with the best teams at the end most of the time. So yes, I'm staying shocked. Well, how's Baylor, Michigan and Illinois Gonzaga. doing buddy? <laughs> all right. Cause they, they, I, Illinois was uh, in that conversation too, by the way, a little bit, everyone thought that they were going to win it all just two weeks ago, man. But two of those four teams are here now. And Colby, at the end of the day, are you a clean sweep for SGPN? Are you going Baylor? Or you like the the points in the Cougs? I'm, I'm going Cougars. And I think okay. these are, these are mirror images of who uh, 
I mean, they both go four guards and one big. Uh, I like Houston's a much better rebounding team. They also take better care of the basketball. And I just think they're, I think you can argue that they have the better coaching advantage to a guy who's coached in a final four before as well. So I, I, I really like drew matching up. I think they're going to put him on Butler. Drew, we saw him take Ethan Thompson out of the game. Yeah, that's a good I point. I expect your Butler to be out of the game, oh. and uh, and give me the Cougars to get it done. Move, move on. I just did the math. One of us is going to go two and zero oh in the final four, so we will have that to tout. Nice, Dan. <laughs> what what are you looking at here? I'm seeing the number four and a half for Baylor. You like laying that here? Or you or you think Houston has a chance here? Well, full disclosure, I, I might have a twenty-five dollar bet on the bar stool app that was boosted to win two thousand on Houston if they win the tournament. So, I, I definitely would like them to win. And, and to your guys' point, I mean, listen, Grimes, Sasser, and Jeru, that they they can definitely. I, I think that you know you look at the game against Rutgers that that Houston should have lost, and all these teams that seemed you know to go on these magical runs like Kevin Walker going back to Connecticut when they had that six overtime game in the biggest tournament, they get through, through that crazy game. And that was theirs. And, and they're capable of beating a, a team like Baylor, but I am with you on this. The, Baylor is a right, a professional team. I mean, they are well coached. They, they can do everything. Well, they play good defense. They can run, they can get after you. They, they can kind of swarm the way they did in their last couple of games, especially against Arkansas where Arkansas is making a run. And then the next thing you know, Baylor scored seven straight. Yeah, it's crazy. And I think it's going to be close. I think the spread is I thought it'd be around five, and I think I think the the spread is fair. Um, I, I'm going to take Houston plus the points, Ooh. but I think Baylor's going to win that game. Oh, okay, so oh. I think I think, but I again, like Dan, I appreciate Dan precise prediction. I appreciate him admitting that you know he has this potential two thousand dollar win <laughs> that could be coloring his judgment. Well, it, it's funny I know be, I'm guilty of that because uh, Joseph Ames over in the YouTube chat, Sean wants my help mm. with how he should hedge his forty five to one ticket on Houston winning it all. Oh, that's a tough one because on one hand, hedging's for pussies. Yes. On the other hand, <laughs> I don't think Houston, <laughs> I don't think Houston has a fucking chance here. So if I'm you and I'm sitting on a 45 to one, I actually might play a little Baylor money line in this well, one. Baylor money line. But also again, these hedging situations, Again, risking a little what are we bit. Talking but about? We talking about a house? We talking about a car? Yeah, consider we talking your about situation. A roast beef sandwich? We gotta. We gotta. <laughs> can, can, can I bring up the commandments? I feel like you guys are ignoring uh -oh. the fact that one what? team is a clear cut. They take care of the ball better. Houston, yeah. better rebounding yeah. team. Houston, way better free throw shooting team. Baylor just shooting 69% from the free throw yep. line. You're ignoring all the commandments. I'm disappointed guys. Give me the Cougars well, to get it done. Two, two things. Colby's more prepared than me today, which is, <laughs> I'm, I, I will say this. I, I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm going head to head with Colby Let's go. Uh, on this tournament. Colby, one of Bruins, us, is, baby. one of us is slang or two of us are slang. One I have of a us winning record. I just had uh, UCLA. I'm like two like an anchor behind <laughs> that boat that just got clogged up in the <laughs> Suez canal. <laughs> this spreadsheet. All I see is red right. of you. On all right, eight, buddy. All right. And let's you know, Dan, uh, you know, talking college basketball before we uh, let you go, we uh, Kramer, not a fan of uh, Jim Harbaugh. Where are you oh. at with Jim Harbaugh? I'm sure you're a huge Michigan football fan as well. I'm looking at your profile photo on Twitter and you're, ah. you're, you're at the big house here. <laughs> what, what, what did you think when you heard the news that Jim Harbaugh had his contract extended uh, earlier well, this year? First off, I'm the one that I got two hours of sleep. So I'm the big winner of all four of us today. <laughs> but uh, let me just say this, you know, you, you can call me a face painter, a uh, Michigan sycophant. Like I'll admit it. I mean, I cover the, I got to cover the teams by both sides. Cause we have those stupid Spartan fans here, but I am definitely a Michigan, you know, Homer, but I'm fair about it. And I was one of the few, at least in our market, we have, you know, one major sports station here in Detroit that has really gone after Harbaugh. I mean, I respect him as a, I know him, I don't know him that well, but I respect him as a human being. I don't think he's a bad person, but I, for the last, I was at the Buckeye game when Michigan lost. I think it was a hundred. I think they're still scoring 140 to three, whatever it was. Uh, you know, Michigan, <laughs> the, the biggest favorite they've been against the Buckeyes in 20 years. That game sucked. I left in the late fourth quarter. I never leave games early. I don't want to get my car egged. So I've been very frustrated with Jim Harbaugh and the fact that there are certain, I mean, I'm connected to a lot of people that donate a lot of money to the, a lot of the boosters in, in Ann Arbor, and they are completely fine with Harbaugh. Some of them are, are starting to get a little uncomfortable, but the big rich, you know, money people are so disconnected to the yeah, average. Yeah. I mean, if I'm, if I'm someone cutting a huge check to the university of Michigan, I'm, I'm writing in the memo 
Oral Roberts beat Ohio State. When are you going to beat Ohio State, <laughs> right. Mr. Harbaugh? Well, and that's, the thing. that's the thing. It's like, okay, I understand that, you know, the grad rates are great and who's got it better than us. I don't know, pretty much everybody, definitely Ohio <laughs> State. And all the, you know, the national attention, recruiting day with the stars, the rap videos, it's stupid. You know, it's great that he's taking the kids to South Africa and France and, and it's spread, you know, giving a football helmet to the Pope. I don't give a shit. I want to beat the Buckeyes. They're all in five. I, I was at the Rose Bowl in 98. It was amazing. It was one of the great days of my life. We are so far removed from that. So I've kind of come out for the last two plus years and said, listen, it's time to move on. I understand that it's better than it was at a rich rod and, and hope, but that was terrible under them. And what's the point? If all you're doing is having hollow nine, 10 win seasons, but you're one in six and over against Ohio state and Michigan state, you have the terrible record on the road against 500 teams, the terrible record in overall against top 25, top 15, and definitely top 10 teams. And you're all in five, all in six now against Ohio all in five, and you know, cause they didn't want to play, but it's one of these <laughs> things where it's time to look somewhere else. And people say, well, Leach, who do you want instead of Harbaugh? And I give them like seven names and it's still never Matt Campbell would have been perfect with the resources in Ann Arbor wow. compared to what him or like a Brian Harson had at Boise state. It's not even close. And I think there are better solutions, but listen, he's still a good coach. He went to at least three straight NFC title games uh, with the, the Niners. He was a couple yards away from a super bowl winning trigger around perennial power five dorm at Stanford and St. Diego, all that stuff. So I know he can do it, but w- we want to wait until it's year 20. For, if you're Kirk Ferentz in Iowa, <laughs> What the hell? I think I think so, yeah, I think the problem was the the brass at Michigan just thought they must be getting an upgrade because this head coach wears a headset. Of course, what? Brady Hoke, famous for not wearing a headset. <laughs> I was about to say he wasn't. I mean, that's the problem, I think, in this scenario is that oh, Rodriguez and Hoke were there prior. It's such a tough situation to be in because on one it's, hand it's clearly a step up from Rich Rod, but you're right. Yeah. It doesn't seem like the ultimate answer. No. But that, that, well, I'll tell you this the the, the you know the, the people that I take calls from. And we have, you know, there's way more Michigan people that will call our station than state people. Just, you know, I mean, we're smarter, but it's it's one of these things where <laughs> I, I kid my Spartan brother <laughs> that a lot of the fans are coming over to where I've been. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, say it's a, to to boast or anything, but I was getting some pushback, and I'm normally the one that's looked at as like I'm very positive. It's the way I am. You look at my Twitter, you'll see it. it'll change your life. By the way, follow me at Daily Shiny Seven One. <laughs> and um, it's one of these things where. People are starting to say, okay, well, I think you're right about this. That okay, you want to wait seven, eight, nine. I remember I had a call a couple years ago. Harbaugh was in his fourth year, I think it was the, the year four. And a guy said, Yeah, the schedule of year seven looks year, year seven. <laughs> like, what are we year seven? How about we worry about beating the Buckeyes now? And I think that you can't just let you can't if you start accepting certain things, apathy sets in, then you're totally fucked. And I think it's on Ward Manual, the general, the general manager, the athletic director to have the foresight to say, listen, enough is enough. I know they restructure the deal. It's a five-year deal, but there's out clauses and it's not as much, you know, buyout money. That's great. But you can't just sit on your hands and say, Oh, nine, 10 wins. Okay. Then you're both ladies, Nebraska or Kirk Ferentz is Iowa. And that's, I know Michigan isn't what people think it is, but it's still Michigan. It's still the winningest program in history. It's still a team that had Bo Schembechler and Charles Woodson and Lloyd Carr and a national title and terrific Tom Brady and all that stuff. You got to expect better. And right now it's not happening. And that's why I think if, I mean, yes, this year kind of sucked. It wasn't a 10, it wasn't a zero, but the COVID year was weird. So I get it. But if, if the same thing happens with this supposed great recruiting class again, and, and the McCarthy, the five-star quarterback coming in, then how about that? Harbaugh is the quarterback whisper. Has not had one quarterback other than Jake? <laughs> so if, if you have a good year, okay then I'll give you a chance to say we can finally do this. But if they, if they fumble again and lose to Mel Tucker and Michigan state, <laughs> lose to the Buckeyes, it is time to move on. Uh, I'm I, I've been done, but I will be 100% done if they don't have like a really, really ridiculously good season. I, I, I got a, they have two sets of back-to-back away games, man. They have two different sets uh, as as of 2019, you lose 93 percent of those games. Uh, I mean, I mean, what, you lose one of of two 93 percent of the time. So you're I, saying their schedule is tough. Next I think year. it's incredible. Uh, Ohio State has zero back to back away games. I I, I look, out that maybe I, we'll and I hate Ohio State. I want Michigan to beat them every year, but uh, I, I I don't 
I don't see a, a, a great maybe, season. Maybe we'll get our yeah. wish and Harbaugh will be back in the NFL. <laughs> well, Dan, <laughs> just stop the lines they got. <laughs> Dan, appreciate you calling in. Feel like you're a kindred spirit. Welcome anytime <laughs> on the show. Make sure you follow Dan on Twitter at Dan Leach971. Check him out on 971theticket.radio.com. Dan, appreciate it, man. Hey, my pleasure and honor. I feel the same way. Uh, keep up the great work, guys. All right. Take it easy, Dan. Oh, such great energy, such great passion. Awesome. Talking to Dan, new friend of the show. Hey, we got to give out a lock, a dog, maybe a bonus lock. I don't know. We'll figure this out. Before we do that, want to shout out Better Than Vegas, where we're giving out free daily video picks every day over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. That'll take you right to our profile page. Hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video pick. That's right. Better than dot Vegas. It's better than YouTube because it's YouTube, but all sports gambling. That's right. Let's go. Better than dot Vegas. Time for the lock dog and bonus lock. Mm. I, I don't know. Uh, what do I want to stake my lock record whoa, on? Go ahead. Whoa, Kramer. Whoa. Will, whoa. Kramer. Of course you're going to start. Keep the heater alive. I was going to say at what, least for, what's going on over there, Sean. <laughs> I was just uh, no I in team, sir. I'm impressed that that uh, that worked. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. Managed to somehow have live callers on a live show, Sean. Lock. <laughs> this is easy. Gun- Gonzaga. Dog parlay. Gonzaga money line. Wait, is Gonzaga money line with Baylor money line gonna be a positive? No, just no. do on the spread. <laughs> parlay the two. Okay. And then bonus lock. Baylor minus four and a half. Uh, call me Ashy Larry, because I'm I'm chalky. I'm they're sorry. And if you if you're asking me to make a pick, I like the overs too. I'm going. Uh, I, I know we didn't talk a ton of totals, but I actually like both unders. Uh, total for the Houston Baylor's one thirty six and a half for my lock. Give me uh, Baylor minus fourteen and a half for my dog. Baylor minus four and a half parlayed with UCLA plus fourteen, oh, and copy for my, my bo- uh, copy, I was the guy <laughs> who invented it. UCLA <laughs> plus fourteen as my bonus lock. Colby, you're in an interesting spot here. You think both teams are going to win outright? Both do. dogs. Yeah. What do we got well, here for the lock bonus lock? Uh, well, my lock is going to be Houston. I think Houston they plus have an four advantage and a half. at every position. Um, <laughs> I really do. Like, I love it. They rebound better. I mean, I, I don't mean like one by one, as in point guard lining up with point guard, shooting guard. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, talking about you. every I aspect of the game. Um, and then uh, my dog is going to be like, well, let's go Houston again. I feel better about that one than I do the, the UCLA dog. Streams are crossing. And the bonus UCLA plus 14. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Have you ever seen so many fleas on a dog, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think UCLA is going to be a public dog. Really? Uh, I mean, you really? can bring up, bring up the, uh, I mean, that's why it's, I think it's going up the spread really. Yeah. I mean, I better get my action down now, though. Pull, pull up some numbers, but I, I think it's going the, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it opened at 13 and a half and it's up to 14. So I think people are with you, Ryan, Ashy, no, Ashy I Ryan think, I think everyone's going to be reporting how this is a historic line. All right. Here's the breakdown uh, per the site I'm looking at. Houston, I'm going to start with Houston. Houston has 68% of the tickets, mm. but only 15% of the money. Mm. Square. UCLA, 67% of the bets, only 10% of the money. Square. <laughs> so both both sides, we see more tickets printed for the dog, but less money. What does that tell you? The motherfucking whales like me, the sharps. The big timers, <laughs> the guys walking in with the duffel bag of cash, not putting down 25, 50, a hundred dollars. I'm getting down for those big stacks. All right. Three of them. High society. Let's go. <laughs> Sean, you didn't want me to look up the numbers because the numbers made me even more confident. No, I mean, uh, what makes me more confident is that I'm dominating the no. odds crowd competition. I just don't want you to lose and I'm trying uh, to help you. I'm in a win-win spot Baylor to win the national championship. <laughs> And I'm taking you Houston. also have Gonzaga to win the national no, championship no, no, to from play, to play Baylor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Th- th- this is another <laughs> issue for human resources. We got to look Check up my bracket, but <laughs> can we get a- Check my bracket. <laughs> can we get the uh, official Col- Colby? Dan well, let's had- go Bruins. Isn't this the best Colby story? Dan had oh. all 68 teams to win the championship. <laughs> 
I did, didn't have did. Norfolk State, bro. He did. He yeah. did break down every <laughs> single game over on the College Experience. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you check us out on Riffer R I F F R. Uh, check us out on the new app. <laughs> I feel like we need a bong rip sound effect. Okay, here's what we got. Woo, it's smoking my no, just I, every time I hear riffer, I can't wait to do my first riff. <laughs> riff. All right, I think you're confusing with the word rip. I, I am oh, completely. Okay. That doesn't mean it can't make me think. Maybe about spliffer. It. Spliffer, whatever. It doesn't matter. Check us out on Riffer. R I F F R. Uh, our handle on there, of course, at Gambling Podcast as well on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. We're going to be talking FCS later in the week. Stay tuned, stay subscribed, get us on the old YouTube and, and chance uh, to get some gear, a hat, t shirt, and hoodie Monday for championship. Hashtag merch madness. So get in your review over on Apple Podcasts. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Let's go, uh, Gonzaga, my new team, my basketball squad. Kramer, let it ride.